Welcome everyone to part three of my how to build a PC in 2019 tutorial series. In the first part, we talked about all the parts of a computer and gave some suggestions on what you should potentially buy to assemble your own system. In part two, we actually assembled the system. We built two systems, an Intel build and an AMD build. Today, I'm gonna to be focusing on installing Windows 10, getting everything set up the way you want it to, working with the UEFI to make sure that the memory is running at the right speed and everything, and even getting so far as to installing Steam and other game clients and maybe even gaming and streaming at the same time. But first, today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com slash Paul's Hardware and get 10% off of your first order. More on that later in the video, but for now, let's get started. Excellent! So let's start with what you need. Of course, the computer that you just built is necessary. You will need the cables to connect it, which mostly should come with the computer itself, either in the power supply box or the power cable. You might need a video cable, for example, like a HDMI. I'm connected up to this monitor via the graphics card. Also, I installed the RTX 2060 in here, which I initially intended to install in the build video, which I swapped accidentally. You guys forgive me, of course, but um, we're now working with the proper graphics card that I intended to install in the first place. And we have, of course, a keyboard and mouse, we have the monitor, we have an internet connection that's represented by my ethernet cable over here. Additionally, you're going to need another computer. That's right, a functional working computer, and that is so you can set up a Windows 10 installation USB, so you will also need a little USB drive for that. I recommend an eight gig drive, um, but just remember everything that's on the drive is gonna be wiped, so don't have anything stored on there. Speaking of storage and backing up stuff, I highly recommend getting some form of external storage, and that is so you can both back up if you have an existing computer that you're transitioning over to the new computer from and to. Copy all that stuff externally so you can copy it onto the new computer, but also having everything saved in more than one location. I'm not gonna go into long-term backup storage solutions or anything like that, but my general rule of thumb is have everything saved on at least two drives. So especially if you're talking about personal stuff, pictures, stuff that's not replaceable, get it on a storage drive that's external as well as something that's internal on your computer. And I'll talk about doing that and setting that up in just a minute. So for that purpose, you'll also probably want an extra drive that's installed in the computer. Right now I've only got a single drive installed installed in here, but I'm going to be adding one more, and that could be another SSD like this 2.5 inch drive, or it could be a spinning mechanical hard drive like this WD Black 3.5 inch drive. They're both SATA drives, so they both plug in the same way. And finally, for that gaming part at the end, I have a headset, so both headphones so I can hear sound from the game, as well as a microphone so I can talk to people in game if I don't want to be a complete noob. And if you're at all considering gaming and streaming at the same time, then you might want a webcam or something so you can show your face on your stream. So for that, I'm just gonna be using this little Logitech C920. I will link an updated version of this in the video's description down below as well. So what we're gonna do now is set up this USB drive to be a Windows 10 installer, to take Windows 10 and install it onto the SSD that's already installed in the system. So for that, you're gonna need your existing computer. Go ahead and open that up and take your USB drive and plug it in. From there, you'll want to navigate to the Windows 10 website. I'll post a link to this in the video's description, but you want the Create Windows 10 Installation Media function. Click Download Tool Now. So from there, just go to your Downloads folder and launch the Media Creation Tool. You'll get a little pop-up, click OK. And from there, you'll see this screen that says, getting a few things ready with a little spinny wait a moment dial. So give it a minute and it should pop up with the next screen. We are definitely going to agree to these licensing terms. Hit accept, wait a few more moments, and then you'll see this screen. Uh, we don't want to upgrade this PC. We want to create an installation media USB flash drive. So click next there. Choose your language edition and architecture. All of these are fine. English, Windows 10, and 64 bits. These are recommended options. You can uncheck that if you want to, but we're gonna hit next. And here we're gonna use a USB flash drive. It needs to be eight gigs. We'll hit next there once again. And then it has recognized the only connected USB flash drive that it deems is eligible to install to. Do double check if you have other drives connected um, that you're not overwriting any of those. This is our only drive that we want to install to right there. Hit next and then it'll take a few minutes to copy all of the Windows 10 information onto your USB drive. While it's doing that, head over to your motherboard manufacturer's website. The motherboard in here is the MSI B450 Tomahawk. Search for your motherboard on your motherboard manufacturer's website. You should have a support page that you can access. You can also download the latest BIOS or UEFI version for your motherboard. I have one that's uh, just a little shy of a month old, so I'm gonna go ahead and download that, the latest version. And then I'm gonna go over to drivers. And here we just wanna make sure that we have the right drivers for the operating system, which is Windows 10 64-bit. And then here we want LAN drivers because we wanna make sure that after we install Windows, we can access the internet on the new system to download any additional drivers that we might want. 
want. So PCIe Ethernet drivers is a good one to grab. The Windows 10 installer might recognize your Ethernet adapter by default, but it's good to have this on hand just in case it doesn't because getting this computer connected to the internet is important. Also, if your motherboard happens to have Wi-Fi integrated, which this does not, you could also download your motherboard's Wi-Fi drivers and then you can connect to your router via Wi-Fi. Either way works as long as you get an internet connection. While we're waiting, if anyone is concerned that I'm not doing the installation on this Intel build I put together, it is literally pretty much exactly the same. The only difference is, is that the motherboard manufacturer's website is gonna be for the Intel motherboard that's installed here, rather than the AMD board that's installed over there. Other than that, you need the same drivers and software and everything for this system that you need for that system. And the USB flash drive is ready. Hooray, we can hit finish. Before we jump over to the new PC though, I'm gonna go into that USB drive that was just created. Still has some space left over on it and I'm going to copy uh, the stuff I downloaded from the motherboard manufacturer's website. I made a new folder for these files and I'm gonna take the BIOS that was downloaded and move that as well as the driver for the LAN. I just relabeled those folders so I know what is what and now we can switch over to the new PC. So I'm just gonna take my USB from uh, the computer I used to create the Windows 10 installer, plug it in to one of the USB ports on the back of my system here, and then we can turn the system on, uh, make sure the switch back here is in the right position, then just power button should do it. And when you first boot up a new computer for the first time, it's going to access the motherboard's UEFI or BIOS. And you'll also probably see on the monitor it's connected to a splash screen. Usually it's got the logo of the motherboard manufacturer. Right now we see Arsenal Gaming and at the bottom, you will see very, very briefly some information about hitting the delete button to enter the UEFI BIOS. You can double check what that splash screen says, but it is almost always the delete button. So as the system is booting up, I'm just gonna tap the delete button once every second or two, and that should allow me to access the UEFI BIOS. This is MSI, it's got a graphic user interface, so you can actually use your mouse to navigate around and click on different things. And the first thing I always do is just reality check to make sure that everything you installed is actually there and installed and functional. We can see the motherboard listed in the top right, B450 Tomahawk. Our CPU is the Ryzen 5 2600. Memory installed is eight gigs, which reminds me that I installed an eight gig kit in this system rather than a 16 gig kit that was re recommended. I'll fix that in just a second. Uh, we can also see the vCore, DDR voltage, some other stuff. BIOS version is listed right here. So what we're gonna do first is update the BIOS. There's different ways to do that. For MSI, they have a utility called mFlash. So I can click over here on mFlash and hit OK. The system will quickly reboot into BIOS flashing mode. Uh, Gigabyte and Asus have functions that allow you to update the BIOS from within the UEFI. You just need to access the QFlash feature. Double check your motherboard's manual and it should have a walkthrough for that. Just make sure that if you're updating your system's BIOS, the system stays plugged in and powered on. You don't wanna power it off, especially if it's mid-update. That is a way that you can potentially bring your motherboard and force you to reinstall it. But we've rebooted here into mFlash mode. My USB drive is already plugged in. I'm gonna to go to the folder I created, MSI B450 Tomahawk. Click on the UEFI BIOS folder I made and here we can see the file that I am updating to, version 1.5. We're currently using version one, so that's, that's good for me. Click on that and hit okay and give it just a few moments while it updates the BIOS. The BIOS update completed, uh, the system automatically restart afterwards, and I am tapping the delete button upon the restart to get back into the BIOS because we're not quite done yet. Actually, before any of that, I'm going to install a 16 gig memory kit because this memory kit is eight gigs. I intended to install a 16 gig kit, but the kit I had that was matching is the wrong size. So let me pop these out. Now the system is starting back up again and I'm tapping delete once again to get back into the UEFI. Sometimes you'll get a message like this if you swap out memory or a CPU. So if you're upgrading from a 2200G to a 2600, for example, you'd probably see this. That's okay, it just means the system recognized that something changed, so it wants to go into the UEFI to make sure all the settings are appropriate before it proceeds to try to load Windows. Now, we can again double check and make sure everything's looking good. Memory size is now up to 16 gigs, so that's awesome. When it comes to memory, it will automatically run at a default speed, and for this platform, that is 2133. Since you probably bought faster memory, you wanna make sure the memory is running at the faster speed that it's capable of running at. And assuming that you bought Ryzen compatible memory, you should be able to just do the easy thing, which is to enable XMP settings in order to get that up and running. MSI made a shortcut for it up here. Uh, it's just an on off button. So click on and now it's on. And down here, there's actually two XMP profiles for this memory kit. One's a slower speed of 3066. One is a faster speed of 3400. Uh, I want the faster speed. So I'm gonna go with profile two, just like that. Finally, going down to storage, I'm just double 
double checking to make sure that the SSD I have installed is being recognized. I just installed a SanDisk 240 gig, so that's right there too. Also, our SATA controller is in AHCI mode, which it should be by default, but that's something that's also good to double check. One last thing before we uh, back out of here is our fans. And here, I'm noticing that one fan in particular is running a little loud. All the fans are plugged into fan headers on the motherboard, and those are all labeled. The one that's being loud is the one that's plugged into the pump fan header. So I'm just gonna click on this P pump fan. I'm gonna click the little gear icon, and then I'm going to make it slower. Also, it's only a three pin plug for that fan, so it does not have PWM. That's what the fourth pin for is for with fan plugs. So I'm gonna switch to DC mode, and then I'm just gonna grab uh, these, these guys on here and move them down so that it runs at a lower RPM, at a lower temperature. Uh, there's a bunch of different tweaking and stuff you can do with this type of thing, but I'm just keeping it simple for now. Uh, hit OK. Once you've made the changes you want to make in the UEFI, you can usually hit F10 to save and exit. That's one way to do it. Uh, or here in the MSI board, we can go to advanced mode and settings. And then there also we have a save and exit, exit option. Save changes and reboot. That's going to save and reboot. And then we want it to boot off of that USB drive, the Windows 10 installer that we just created. We could go back into the UEFI and change the boot priority, or we could hit F11. And as the splash screen pops up here once again, at the very bottom, we should see a very, very quick list of other things you can press besides delete. Delete. One of those is F11. F11 takes you to a quick boot menu, and here we can manually tell the system, I want to boot off of the UEFI USB disk that I just created. Do UEFI, not just USB disk, you want UEFI mode. Uh, hit OK on that, and then it will start booting off of that drive and get you into the Windows 10 installation environment. So now we're actually installing Windows 10. You can choose uh, alternate languages here, as well as time and currency formats. We're going to leave those all at default. And then here you can install or repair. Keep this USB installed because you can use it for repair functions in the future, but we're just gonna click install now. Just a brief moment while it loads up some installation stuff. Here's where you can plug in your Windows 10 product key if you happen to already have one. Don't worry if you don't, click I don't have a product key. We can grab one later. And then here's where you choose the version you want to install. I usually go with Windows 10 Pro. You can also go with Windows 10 Home. Those are the two choices I would recommend for you guys. For our purposes, we're gonna go with Windows 10 Pro for right now. We have more license terms, which we, of course, will read thoroughly and agree to. And then here, we're gonna click custom rather than upgrade. I always like custom installs, do it clean, do it fresh. And that will take you to this interface where you choose which drive to install to. I only have one drive connected, that is drive zero, but this drive has been used before, which means it already has some partitions on it. Now, bearing in mind that we're gonna be deleting everything that's on this drive, so of course, we've already double checked to make sure there's no important information. We're just gonna delete all of the existing partitions on the drive so that we're left with nothing but unallocated space. And then we can install Windows onto that unallocated space. You could hit new and make your own partition, but just hit next and it'll do it automatically. From here, it will copy Windows files, get ready for installation, install features. This process will vary depending on the speed of your system and the USB drive that you're loading off of, but usually it takes between eight and 15 minutes, and then you can move on to the next step. After the Windows 10 installation finishes, it will do an automatic restart, which it has just done right now. And since I did the quick boot in order to boot off of that USB drive, it's gonna automatically restart refresh and boot back off of the SSD that it just installed to. If you went into the BIOS and manually changed your boot order in order to boot off of that USB drive, then now's a good time to go back in there and switch it back. So again, it's booting off of the Windows Boot Manager for the SSD that you installed Windows to. Here it's going to do a bit more housekeeping stuff, getting ready, and then we're going to go into first steps. After a quick restart, we are now greeted with these messages. Start with the region. We're in the United States, so we'll go ahead with that. We're sticking with the US keyboard layout. We don't want to add a second keyboard, but you can do that here if you need uh, more accessibility. And here we could connect to the in internet, but uh, we're going to skip that for now. Windows 10 really wants me to connect to the internet. No, not, not yet, Windows 10. I'll connect to the internet when I am ready. And now you can create a name for the computer. Uh, with Windows 10, the license can be attached to the computer or the license can be attached to you via a Microsoft account. I usually attach the licenses to the computer, so that's the method I'm gonna focus on for today, but your computer needs a name. We're just gonna call it Tommy. Next up, create a password. Definitely you should do this. I'm not gonna do it right now because I wouldn't show you what my password is anyway, but, but always create a password. It's the way you keep your computer secure. Next up, it'll ask if you wanna use Cortana. No, no you do not. Next up, device history across multiple devices. No, I don't care about that either. Privacy settings. I always turn all of these off because I don't want Microsoft to track me. Microsoft is still gonna track me to some degree, but this is the way you can tell Microsoft, no, I want you to track me as little as possible. And then after that, Microsoft will say, hi, we're getting everything ready for you and just a few more minutes to wait before you can actually use the operating system. 
Look, Windows 10 is installed, that's awesome. Uh, of course, we still need to do quite a few setup procedures, and I'm gonna start out with my personal method for making the Windows 10 UI just a little bit easier to handle. For one, let's go to themes and related settings, and here I just like to choose desktop icon settings and add the computer icon to the desktop. This is just a personal preference, you don't need to do this at all. Next up, open up File Explorer via the little file folder icon on the desktop and go over to View. And here we want to go to Options. This will bring up Folder Options. I like Open File Explorer to this PC rather than Quick Access. And then over on View, I display the full path in the title bar. I show hidden files, folders, and drives. I do not hide empty drives. And this one in particular is the one I always turn off. Hide extensions for known file types. I just think that's a stupid thing that Microsoft should never use. This means that we can now see the file extensions of stuff like .inf, .efi, .exe. We can now see if this is an executable file we might be running by double clicking it, for example. Now that this PC is on the desktop, we can right click it and go to manage. And there's a couple things we will want to access in computer management. One is going to be the device manager. We can click on that and we can see all the devices that the PC currently has in it that the operating system does not recognize. Don't worry, Windows Update should be able to handle a bunch of these. We'll also be looking at disk management in just a minute, but I'll come back to that. I also like to turn off the people icon on the taskbar, also personal preference. But at this point, we are ready to connect this computer to the internet. So I'm gonna take my blue cable of internet access here and plug it in to the RJ45 port on the back. And in just a moment, we should have internet access. When you connect to a network, Windows 10 will ask you if you want to make your PC discoverable. If you're on a home network and you want to network between computers to transfer files, then click yes. If you're on a public network or you're not sure, click no. Now we can see that we have internet access. So at this point, you should do Windows Update over and over and over again. You can access that by hitting the Windows key and typing updates. That should take you to the check for updates function in settings. We're gonna click check for updates. It should come back with some updates that are found. It will then install them. We'll let it do that automatically. We'll then manually tell the system to restart. We'll then access Windows Update again, see if it has any more updates, let them install, restart, rinse and repeat this process until when you access Windows Updates, it says there are no updates left to install, you're up to date. Even then, click update yet again, just to double check, because sometimes it doesn't always catch things right away, but um, do it a few times and then everything should be up to date. Among these updates though, you might notice it downloading some drivers. So for instance, this is an NVIDIA display driver that it's downloading from back in January. Also advanced micro devices, that's AMD. So it's gonna be downloading some uh, drivers for the chipset and some of the motherboard hardware that's installed. Now that Windows is up to date, I'm gonna use Microsoft Edge here to download Chrome and Firefox. Uh, I tend to like to have multiple browsers, but if we go to google.com, we can access Chrome. Uh, so we'll go ahead and download that. And at the same time, we'll go to the Mozilla website to download Firefox, because Firefox is also a very good browser, and they're an independent uh, browser source, so I, I like them. Uh, we'll hit run on both of these and install them both at the same time, which maybe isn't the best idea, but we're going to do it. It's gonna, overlapping browser installs. That's fun. All right, we'll let Firefox go first, and then we'll let Chrome go. Yay, Firefox. Feel free to use Microsoft Edge as well. Just bear in mind, Edge is switching to Chromium, so Edge and Google Chrome are gonna be very similar. Beyond that, Chrome and Firefox are generally my go-tos. I will then also unpin Edge from the taskbar down there, and then go ahead and pin Google Chrome and Firefox. Pinning frequently used tasks to the taskbar down here allows you to access them without having the icon on your desktop, and that helps your desktop stay clean, which is always nice. From there, we can load up either browser, and uh, it might recommend that you set a default browser because Edge is default. Uh, I'll switch to Chrome, and yes, switch anyway. From here, I'm just gonna go back to the MSI B450 Tomahawk uh, webpage from MSI, so I can go back to the support page and double check that there's no drivers that Windows 10 installed that there might be updated versions for. In order to do that, go back to Manage after right-clicking on this PC, and we can click Device Manager, and we can actually see that there are no more unrecognized hardware devices here. Windows 10 did a good job of sort of scooping all those back up. But you can go back over here to driver, select Windows 10 64 bits, uh, and then you can see if there's any additional drivers. You don't need the RAID driver unless you're setting up RAID, and I'm not going to cover that in this video. There's also a chipset driver, which you might potentially want to update, uh, LAN drivers in particular, if they're not recognized. For now, I'm just going to go with what we have, because this AMD chipset driver is from November of last year, so chances are we're not too far out of date. So instead, we're going to go to the NVIDIA website, 
since we have an NVIDIA RTX 2060 installed and we're gonna download drivers from here because the GPU driver is something that is very important for your gaming performance. You can have the website automatically detect what you have installed or you can tell it what you have installed. We have a 20 series 2060, everything else is the same. Latest driver is from three days ago on February 22nd. So we'll click download on that, wait for it to download and then install that as well. Anything that you download should download to the downloads folder. That's why it's there. So you can run the NVIDIA driver installer from there. Click OK, it should automatically install. Again, just takes a few minutes and everything should be automatic. The one thing that I typically don't install from the NVIDIA drivers is the NVIDIA GeForce Experience. That's my personal preference though. GeForce Experience can actually be pretty handy for you if you're not familiar with how to go into a different game and do the settings or to have the automatic capture feature for it. So, so feel free to install GeForce Experience if you want to, just I'm not going to here. The installer finished, we can click close and sometimes it'll prompt you for restart, but not every time. And now the computer is pretty much set up the way you'd want it to. Um, you might consider an antivirus, but Windows has Windows Defender built into it, which does a decent job. At this point, I'm gonna move on to actually using this gaming PC for PC gaming. So to install and manage PC games, usually you're gonna use a game manager. Uh, Steam is the most popular one and gives you access to a huge library of games, a lot of them free to play. Of course, there's a lot of other ones that have come into popularity recently. So Blizzard has their own launcher. Epic has a launcher, especially if you want to play Fortnite, which is free to play. That's another good one. I'm going to install the Origin launcher so we can test out some Apex Legends. And then if everything goes smoothly, I'm going to try out gaming and streaming on the system at the same time. And I'll show you guys some basic setup steps for that too. So for gaming, I'm gonna download the Steam client. For that, just go to steampower.com, click the install Steam icon, and you'll download that little installer. Origin, roughly the same. Go to the Origin download page, and we'll download the Origin Thin Setup client for that. At the same time, I'm gonna go to the obsproject.com website and download the Windows installer version of that too. Um, but one thing that I almost nearly forgot here is that I've added another drive now. So the system's all set up, I have now added a drive or just plugged in a drive if you happen to have unplugged it. You'd probably want to install that better than I have. It's just sitting in there right now. But the actual setup procedure for an additional storage drive is going to be the same whether it's a SATA drive or a mechanical hard drive like this. And for that, you will just want to plug the drive in, right click on this PC, go to manage. Down here you have disk management, so click on that. And since we've just plugged in a brand new completely unformatted and unpartitioned drive, it's popping up and asking me if I want to initialize the disk. You wanna initialize the disk and then create a partition on it. Bear in mind, if you have a drive that you're reusing from an existing system, it might already be formatted and have partitions on it, in which case you'd want to go delete those and then reformat the drive so you can use it as a fresh and new one. For now though, we're just gonna initialize the disk. Use GPT rather than MBR, especially if you're using a mechanical drive that's larger than two terabytes. Click OK, and then down here we can see disk two listed, but all the space on it is currently unallocated. Right click on that, go to new simple volume. This will take you through a wizard to do that. Probably you just want to use the maximum amount of space, although you can partition it into uh, different smaller partitions if you want to. Assign it a drive letter, click next, and then choose the file system you want, NTFS and default. And I usually do a volume label on here, so we'll title it 480 gigabyte storage SSD. And I recommend doing a quick format in order to get the drive up and running and working quickly. Although, if you are using an older drive, especially if it's from an existing computer, you might wanna consider a full format on the drive. Just bear in mind, the larger the capacity of the drive, the longer it will take. And that does mean a few hours potentially for like a four terabyte or a larger drive. With the quick format though, once I hit finish, it should pop up like within just a few seconds usually. And now Windows has asked me what I want to do with the new drive. I usually just tell it to open it. And there look, completely new, clean drive with nothing on it. So now connected to the system, if we eject our Windows installer, cause we don't need that anymore. We have our local disk or the SSD that we installed Windows onto and that still has 194 gigs free on it. And then we've got this other drive that we've just added for storage. And the first thing I'm gonna do in here is go and create a folder called games. My downloads have completed, so I'm gonna go back to the downloads folder and I'll start installing these. We can start with Steam setup and these installers are all pretty much the same. They'll have you choose a language, an installation location. You can just use the default for the most part. The clients will often update themselves as well once you've installed them. And now you can either log into your existing Steam account or create a new one. I'm gonna skip that for now so we can go ahead and install Origin pretty much the same way. 
One thing I do like to turn off is having these run when Windows starts. You know, I'll, I'll tell you if I want you to load application. Automatic updates are okay though, and sharing hardware specs is up to you. Origin is installed, so lastly we will install OBS. So guys, I now have Steam as well as Origin set up and installed, but none of the games are actually installed. So I'm gonna really quickly talk about copying games that you might've already downloaded so you don't have to re-download them, especially if it's you know 20 or 40 or 80 plus gigabytes, it might take a while. It's easier to copy games over that you've already downloaded. And also talking about the external drive that you have hopefully backed up stuff onto, as well as the internal storage drive that we've just recently set up. So I'm gonna take my storage drive here and plug it in the back. I have multiple things on this drive, but the Steam Apps folder is the important one here, and then the Origin Games folder is the other one. So let's start with Steam. If you have Steam and you want to install a game or copy a game that you already have, uh, if you've got Steam loaded up and you're logged in, you can go to Settings, and then you can go to Downloads, and then you can change your Steam library folders. It's gonna have a default one in the x86 Program Files folder. We're gonna add one more, and then we're gonna change it from the C drive here down to the E drive, because if we look at my PC, we've got our operating system drive here and then we have our 480 gig storage drive that we just set up that is the e drive we want to make a games folder in there so we'll hit new folder steam library now we've got a steam library folder select that and now we've got a secondary location we, where we can install games so now on our 480 gig storage drive in the games steam library folder we have a steam apps folder and that's going to be important because that's where the games go so i've gone and exited steam i'm going to go into the steam apps folder and then in the common folder, I'm just gonna copy the FTL faster than lights folder over. And that was really quick. Again, this is not a very large game. I will then relaunch Steam. And if I go back to my games library and go to FTL, uh, it's installed in another system on my network, which is why it's asking me if I wanna stream it though. But if I go to install on this machine and then click install, as long as I point it to the library where I just copied that folder and hit next, so it did this really quickly for me just now, but basically it'll say discovering files. It'll discover the folder that you already copied over there. And then you should just be able to play it. Um, again, it re really quickly because FTL is a very small game, but especially if you have a larger game that's 20 gigs or more, you should be able to do that and then play the game rather than downloading it. Of course, it's Steam. There's tons of free to play games on Steam. So you can just download any game and start playing it. But I also copied Apex Legends, which is about 20 gigs. And I saved that to the origin games folder over here. So again, in my games folder, we have Steam Library. I'm gonna copy Origin Games as well over to that. And that's got the Apex Legends folder with all the uh, files for that game in it too. And that shouldn't take too long here. How fast is it going? 200 megabytes a second. It's not too shabby. Now that that's copied, I'm gonna go back to Origin, go to my game library. Apex Legends is free to play, so anyone can add it to their library. And then here there's a little gear. So rather than download, I'm gonna click the gear and go to locate game. And then I should be able to just point this client to where I copied the game to, which if you guys remember correctly, is my 480 gig storage drive, games, Origin games, Apex. Select folder, hopefully it will verify the game files and then we'll be able to play soon rather than re-downloading this 20 gig client. While that is getting set up, I am going to set up to do some game streaming because that's been my whole goal this whole time is to build this system. This is about a $900 system and actually set it up, show you guys the step-by-step -step process and get to the point where I can game and stream on it to prove to you that this is legit and that I know what I'm doing. So this is just a webcam, Logitech C920. You can get these really cheap now because they've been around for a while. They do 1080 as far as the resolution goes. The video quality isn't phenomenal on them. So there are some newer ones. They have like a 4K version now, or you can get uh, like Elgato has a little adapter USB that you can use to plug in a nicer camera that has an HDMI output. There's a bunch of ways to get your face onto the stream, but this is just a quick and easy one. Logitech Capture apparently is a Windows 10 thing. I've never used this before, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna dive into it here just for you guys. It's downloading automatically. Fortunately, Apex Legends has verified, so that's good to go. Webcam is working, fortunately, so that's good. And I'm also getting my headset plugged in now. Mic and headphone, uh, these are gonna be green and usually a pink or sometimes red. And they should plug into color-coded outputs on the back, except this motherboard MSI is really cool with their color coding, so they made them all red and black. Fortunately, the mic is labeled mic, and then the normal one you'd use for headphones or a standard stereo out is, is highlighted in white, so that's good. 
So at this point I've got my games installed, I have OBS installed, I've plugged in my Logitech camera, I've used the Logitech new software, which seems functional enough. Again, I'm not going to get into the details of the setup for that or for OBS because this video is already getting a little bit too long, but OBS at least I'm just going to use the wizard that they have, which is available under tools, auto configuration, we're going to optimize for streaming. And again, just to keep things simple, I'm just going to go with the defaults that they're suggesting. So 1080 for our outputs, uh, our streaming type here is uh, streaming services, usually Twitch. Uh, I would input my Twitch streaming link here, which I'm not going to show you guys, but I'll pull it up in just a second. I've actually never done the auto configuration wizard with OBS, so it's doing some bandwidth testing right now. That's, that's kind of fun. Uh, it says it just takes a minute or two, and hopefully then it will also maybe access the webcam. All right, so settings are applied, and now we need to set up our scenes, so we're going to add a couple things. Try video capture device first. We will call this webcam. Hit OK, and hey, it automatically popped up with our HD Pro webcam C920. We're going to hit OK on that, and now we can see me right there. You can hold the Alt button and grab the edges of this if you want to crop in, so that uh, just get your face in there and crop out other stuff that might be around. And now we'll also add game capture. And usually it's just by default to capture any, def any full screen application. And then we want the game capture to be behind the webcam, so we'll drag that down underneath. Now we can load Apex Legends. Allow access to the firewall. So now I'm just double checking that uh, Apex Legends is appearing with OBS. I switched Apex Legends to borderless windowed mode so that I can see both at the same time. But now we can see the game is being captured in the background. We can also see that my face is showing up right there. Although the game capture, I need to rescale so that it fits the window. That's better. And now I can start streaming and play a game. Hey guys, anyone jumping in to watch on Twitch, I greatly appreciate you guys being here, but just to be forewarned, this is going to be a single game and a single game only. My apologies, I don't have a whole lot of time today. I am just doing a game demo test for my How to Build a PC video, part three, where I did I just set up this whole PC this morning and now I'm actually gaming and streaming on it at the same time. Oh no, an enemy. Punch Get him. him, punch him. Where'd the enemy go? No guns, I want a gun. No. Don't shoot me. There he is. He did a jump <laughs> kick, that's cool. I tried a jump kick. Instead he came up and hit me with a... Oh, come on teammate. Uh, Where are you going? Oh, you're just ditching me. Thanks for the help, buddy. Just run away. How much time do I have here before I die? Oh, never mind. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was a quick game. I said I was only gonna play one game, but then I died immediately, so now I'm only playing one more game. That's how this works. The stream, from what I can tell, is a little choppy, but it's not looking too bad. Maybe I can get a gun this time. That would be a vast improvement. Why are you being shot at already? It's like the point of the game. Oh, there you go. See? Oh. oh, somebody's already down. I have a longbow. Oh, this is the first time I've ever had a longbow, and I kind of know how it works, sort of, but not very well. Did our teammate just drop out of the game? Oh, oh no. It's oh. <laughs> again. <laughs> this is brilliant. Wow. Fortunately, the point of this was not to show my amazing gameplay. It was to show that this computer I just put together is functional and capable of playing a game and streaming at the same time. Although some more tweaks to the settings would probably maybe smooth out the stream a little bit. But honestly, overall, especially for just this quick setup I did, things are looking pretty smooth. Except for, of course, my ability to shoot a gun and play the game well. So obviously I need to practice more at Apex Legends, but I'll get to that very soon. In the meantime though, that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Of course, there's lots of little details here and there that I didn't cover. Hopefully I got the main things so that you guys can go from a system you just put together to a system that is set up with Windows, games installed that you can start using, start playing games, start enjoying the computer you just built ASAP. Now the last thing here is gonna be Windows 10. Do you wanna activate it? You can actually get by without activating Windows 10 for quite some time it just takes away your personalization options and you'll eventually get a little watermark done in the bottom right that says this copy of Windows might not be genuine. 
And you can actually get around the uh, wallpaper personalization thing if you just download a file. I usually go to interface lift, but of course it's not, the site's not working right now. But if you've downloaded a picture, you can just right click it from Explorer and go to set as desktop background. And now you have a desktop background, even though you don't have personalization options. So that's something you can do there and that will get most people by. But if you really do want a legitimate version of Windows, you can purchase a key. And for that, you should check out my Windows 10 for $20 video. Although the price is now closer to $30, that'll walk you through the steps of activating your version of Windows. Just make sure you only use it for Windows 10 and make sure you get the version of Windows that you installed. So if you installed Windows 10 Pro, get that license key so that you can activate it properly because a home license won't activate on Pro and vice versa. Before I move on though, I'd like to quickly say a thank you to this video sponsor, Squarespace. If you're not familiar with Squarespace, they help you do the internet better by setting up a website of your very own. You can find the link in this video's description, squarespace.com slash Paul's Hardware. If you click that, you get 10% off of your first order. I use Squarespace to power my merch store at paulshardware.net, and it's just really easy to use and get set up because they have templates that allow you to set up a web page that looks nice and looks professional, and they make sure it will look good on any device you happen to view it on, whether it is a smartphone, a tablet, or a desktop PC. So check out Squarespace if you want to make a responsive, flexible website for your business or for a hobby or just to establish yourself as a paragon of internet proficiency. They also have commerce functions that allow you to integrate a store like I've already done with paulshardware.net so you can sell your sweet merch. And if you ever need help, they have 24-7 support via live chat and email. So once again, check out squarespace.com if you need to set up a website and check out the link in the description if you want to get 10% off of your first order or just go to squarespace.com slash paulshardware and thank you to Squarespace space for sponsoring this video. But guys, that wraps it up for this video. I'm going to put relevant links to lots of stuff like where to download the Windows 10 installer down in the video's description. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I really hope it's helped you out. And especially if you know anyone who's maybe considering putting together a computer, not even just a gaming PC, all of these steps can be used to put together a PC to do just about anything you want. So if you want something that's more heavy on storage or you don't need a graphics card because you're not going to play games, but you need a CPU to do some heavy lifting for something, all these apply to building just about any desktop PC. So thanks again for watching this video hit the thumbs up button on your way out and we'll see you guys in the next one.